Welcome to our Global Patient Week LinkedIn Live. I'm so excited to be here today, and I'm joined by our Chairman and CEO, Giovanni Coforio, and Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Chris Berner, who will be our CEO as of November 1st. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. It's great to be here. And am I right that this is your first LinkedIn Live? It is. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's mine too, so we're going to learn together. Excellent. So for those of you who are joining us online, we'd love to hear in the chat where you're joining from. We've sourced questions from around the world, and we have a lot of exciting questions to ask, so let's just jump right in. Giovanni, the first two questions are for you. Global Patient Week has become really a fundamental part of the fabric of BMS's culture, and it started with you. Can you share with us what brought it on? Why did you start Global Patient Week? Well, we started Global Patient Week because uh, we uh, know that what really unites the people of Bristol Myers Squibb is the passion for doing what's right for patients. Uh, and uh, obviously, we work for patients every day uh, in every part of the company, whatever we do. But I thought it was a great idea to stop for a week and all together celebrate patients, what they are expecting from us and what we do for them. And in the last 10 years, it's been fantastic to see how Global Patient Week has grown to be such an extraordinarily exciting week at the company. And can you talk about how it's changed and how it's evolved over time? Well, in many ways, it has stayed the same because the focus of Global Patient Week continues to be to celebrate patients. Mm -hmm. It has grown and it has evolved in many different ways. Of course, it started as a smaller uh, event. And at the beginning, it was primarily focused in the US. And now I'm really excited to see how it has become a global event with so many activities during the week in every country around the world. And the other thing that has changed is that over the years, we've actually seen new patients come, more and more diseases mm -hmm. uh, featured. And at the same time, I actually really enjoy the fact that so many patients are still there because some of the people that I interact with during Global Patient Week were there many, many years ago. Uh, and that's been fantastic to watch also. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts is seeing the same patients come back again and again. It's really fulfilling. Um, for those of you online, if you could tell us in the chat, what are some of your favorite parts of Global Patient Week? And Chris, while they're doing that, can you tell me what are your thoughts on Global Patient Week and why is it impactful for you? Well, there are so many things we could talk about because it's just such an incredible week for the organization. I remember the very first Patient Week that we had and what's so incredible about that event all eight years ago or nine years ago, and it's still th the case today, is just the opportunity that we all have to engage directly with patients. And I think that's what's most exciting. You know, some of us are very fortunate because engaging with patients is kind of part of our day job, but for most employees, that's not the case. And so it was great to see patients interacting with employees and just how much employees got out of those discussions. It's such a great opportunity for all of us at BMS to celebrate the successes that those patients have had. But I think what's also important is it's a reminder of how much additional work we have to do. There are patients who were with us eight years ago who aren't with us anymore. And I think employees take from that both the successes and the opportunities. And I think it's just such a great reminder while we celebrate a patient week, as Giovanni said, every day is patient day at BMS. That is absolutely true. Um, so thank you both. And, and thank you for the responses that we're getting online. Um, Giovanni, let's shift gears a little bit. I'd love to talk about R&D and how R&D is impacted by patients. Can you tell us a little bit about how we embed patient feedback into our development process? I think that's a very, very important point because uh, we need to make sure that everything we do when we develop a new medicine keeps the patient in mind and what the experience of a patient is with the disease and importantly, what they're looking for in terms of a new therapy. There are many ways in which we embed the views of patients into our development uh, activities. First of all, we have a, a program that is really unique to BMS where we invite groups of patients actually to participate in shaping the clinical development strategy and the protocol for some of our most important trials. Uh, and that's something that we started a few years ago, and I think that it will continue to expand to more and more activities. But of course, it's also because of the partnership and the relationship that we have with patient advocacy groups, the research we do into 
uh, generating insights on what the real med medical need is, deep insight into what we call the patient journey with the disease. So there are many parts of the company, in fact, that participate in us understanding better what patients are really looking for, what's their experience with the disease, and then we embed those insights into our clinical development activities. And one of the things that I uh, am really proud of is that now we actually are beginning to look at what different groups of patients uh, differentially may need and embedding our focus on inclusion and diversity into uh, health equity efforts and bring that into the product development cycle as well. So as you both know very well, we have a program here called Who Are You Working For? where we ask each and every employee to tell us who they're working for when they come to work every day. So Chris, I'm going to ask you, who are you working for? Who is your motivation when you come to the office? Well, like so many employees, uh, I think we've had f family and friends who've been impacted not just by cancer, but many devastating diseases. I'd say the person who's been top of mind for me most recently is my friend Alex. Uh, Alex uh, was a colleague of mine many years ago. He became a very close friend of mine. Unfortunately, he passed away around the time we uh, were doing the cell gene acquisition. Uh, he had been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma with neurologic involvement. Unfortunately, he had blown through most of the standard treatments, and really the only option for him was cellular therapy. And as it turns out, one of the cellular therapies we were acquiring from that acquisition. Um, and we did everything we could to try to get him access. Unfortunately, it was in this period after the drug had been filed with the FDA, but not yet approved. And unfortunately, there were no trials open, and he ended up uh, dying before the, uh, the product was approved. And I think for, for me, it's a reminder because every week I think about him, he's just been such an inspiration for me, but it's also a reminder that weeks matter mm -hmm. and that um, you know all of us have the opportunity to influence how quickly we're able to, to get medicines to patients, whether in small ways or big ways. And I think his story is a reminder of how critical that is. There's also hope embedded in that story though. While Alex couldn't benefit from our cellular therapy, since we've gotten approval for the two cellular therapies we have uh, on the market, over 4,000 patients have. And I think that's such an incredible thing for us to keep top of mind. But Alex is the person that I've been thinking about most recently. Wow. So one, I'm sorry for your loss and your friend. Um, and it is such an important reminder of why we work with such urgency, why minutes can matter, right? Days matter, minutes matter for patients. And so we need to keep that in mind as we do what we do every day. Um, I think it's also a powerful reason for Global Patient Reap, right? As you hear, as Giovanni mentioned, and you both mentioned, as you hear the stories and you see the patients, we hear about how we've impacted their lives and then we think about the people who we haven't been able to impact yet and why it's so important that we keep doing what we're doing and we do it with urgency. Um, we're gonna switch gears again one more time. Um, we hear a lot about health equity, Giovanni. That phrase is used constantly. Can you talk about what health equity means to you and what you think it means for our patients? Well, I think for me, it's very simple. Uh, we, uh, we work to discover, develop, and deliver to patients innovative medicines that can make a big difference in their lives. Uh, we focus on serious diseases where often there are no options. And so for me, it's really important that there are no barriers to any patient that needs one of our medicines anywhere in the world to have access to the treatment they need. That's as simple as uh, what the definition of health equity is. Of course, it's a complex issue though. And so I am really proud that we have taken an approach where we look at health equity. And in fact, we look at barriers to, uh, for health equity in many different areas. And we have a very a uh, broad approach where we're trying to make a difference uh, in enabling patients' access to medicines through many different angles. Yeah. Um, we've done so much on that space and I'm really proud of it, but there's clearly, to your point, a lot to do until every patient can have the medicine that they need regardless of where they are. So we have more to do on that as well. Chris, I know that you're riding in Coast to Coast for Cancer this year. Yep. And I know that you've ridden many years. Yep. Every year I've been here. Wow. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about how you think Coast to Coast impacts patients and their families? 
Well, you know, I think first of all, Coast to Coast is just such an incredible event for the company. It's become somewhat of a cultural event in part because of how it originated. It wasn't a corporate top-down event. It was an event that really generated with employees, employees who at the start were employees who spend all of their day every day focused on cancer patients, sales reps in our oncology division. Um, and they wanted to do more and they wanted to raise money for cancer research. And so we provided them the resources to, to do the ride. It's since of course become a global ride. It's opened up well beyond just the oncology division. Um, and it's timing with patient week is really important. And I think for me, coast to coast is a reminder of just first how cancer has affected everyone. And I'll give you a quick anecdote. On the first ride that I did, we stopped to take a rest in Oregon. And um, I'll never forget, we were outside of a, a restaurant that was closed or so we thought, and we were in the parking lot and this man comes out and asks what we're doing and invites us in to give us some, some food and drink. And as we were leaving, we went to pay him. And with a tear in his eye, he basically said, I don't want you to give me any money, but I do want you to write the name of my wife on your jersey, she just passed away from breast cancer. And in that very small moment, you were reminded that this affects everyone. And I think for me, having the opportunity to see employees come together for this event is so powerful. It's such a reminder of what motivates people at Bristol Myers Squibb. I've had the pleasure of writing with employees who themselves have been treating or were being treated for cancer. We've lost patients, uh, employees who had been part of the ride and have died of cancer. Um, and I think it's just a reminder for all of us of how critical it is the work that we do at Bristol Myers Squibb, not just in oncology, but really across all of our therapeutic areas. Yeah, wow. Um, for those of you watching who have participated in Coast to Coast, who's either ridden in it or who have supported it, we'd love to hear your Coast to Coast stories as well. Um, and I have to say, every time I hear you or someone talk about it, I feel like I have to get on that ride. Um, everyone I know who's done it has said it is life altering. Um, and it's just such an important way that we honor our commitment to patients. And one of the things that we've done a really nice job over the last couple of years is make it not just about the people who can ride, but also we've made it um, a broader event. So whether you can ride, you can you don't wish to ride or can't ride, you can still support the organization and the team. Yeah, no, exactly. I think everyone gets involved in Coast to Coast. It's just yeah. such an important event for all of us. So now, Giovanni, I think I speak for many, many people when I say that we are going to miss you when you retire um, in a few months as CEO. Um, it has been such a pleasure to just work with you and you have meant so much to many of us. And, and for me personally, a highlight of my career has been being able to work closely with you for the next, for the last two years. Um, can you just talk about reflecting a little bit on your time here? What is, what is either your favorite or what are some of your favorite memories um, about your interactions with patients while you've been in this role? Well, thank you. First of all, I, uh, I think there are many of those moments and, uh, Many of those moments, in fact, are about interactions with the people of BMS while we were working together for patients. Uh, at the same time, uh, I've been lucky in many ways to be able to participate in a way uh, in seeing extraordinary advances. And so one of the things that I will always bring with me is having witnessed how immuno-oncology has transformed the treatment of cancer. And I have so many memories of patients that were uh, able to benefit from what was a revolutionary approach to, to the treatment of a very serious disease like cancer. Um, more recently, in fact, looking at uh, the potential of cellular therapies and what CAR T treatments can do for patients, again, I have great stories that will stay with me forever. And it extends, in fact, beyond cancer because of the progress we've made across many diseases from seeing how uh, we are able to address the needs of patients with cardiomyopathies and some of the ones that I have met and stories that I've learned about families impacted by the same disease. You know, having witnessed in fact how one of our own scientists connected in a very special way with uh, having discovered himself the treatment 
for a, a treatment for psoriasis that uh, he suffers from and seeing him uh, potentially receiving a medicine he had discovered. So there are many, many stories and uh, uh, they have been uh, obviously part of my life every day, but I think they'll stay with me for a very long time. Well, thank you for that. And, and your legacy and, and how you've kept patients at the center of everything that we do will stay with us for a very long time. So thank you, thank you for everything. Um, Chris, this is our last question. And now turning to our future, what do you see as the future in innovation for patients with really serious diseases like cancer or Alzheimer's? Well, I mean, it's a great question, but I think the future as I see it has never been brighter. If you look at the amount of innovation taking, a, taking place across the industry, I think it's almost unprecedented. And we are really as an industry at the cusp of being able to make significant advances in diseases that were previously intractable. And the great thing for employees at Bristol Myers Squibb is BMS is really at the center of that ecosystem. And um, when you look at our pipeline, I think it's certainly um, more exciting than at any time in the, the period that I've been at BMS. You know, we've just launched nine new medicines, three first in class medicines. Uh, the products that we have on the market are already having a, a big impact for patients. But as we look forward, I think there's such a great opportunity for us to continue the great legacy of this company. This is a company that's been on the front end of treating many diseases, HIV, cardiovascular disease, Giovanni mentioned immuno-oncology, the opportunity we have with cellular therapy today. And if you flash forward, that opportunity expands even further to other areas of oncology, to neurology, to areas within immunology. So it's an incredibly exciting time to be in the industry because of the opportunity we have to help patients. And it's really an incredible opportunity to be at BMS and to see the opportunity we have as a company to continue to help so many patients. And it's a, it's a humbling opportunity for me to be part of that, to fill some very big shoes. Giovanni is leaving and uh, I could not be more optimistic about the future um, for patients and the role that we're going to play to help those patients. Great, and I can tell you that many of us are really excited and hopeful to join you on that journey. So. Excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you. That's all the time we have today. So thank you again, Giovanni and Chris for joining me. Um, and thank you all of you who joined us online and, and have a fantastic Global Patient Week.